imitate, assimilate, innovate. This trio of words, cherished by musicians and educators worldwide, encapsulates the guitarist's journey from student to artist. Our guitar heroes inspire and drive us to imitate their playing as accurately as possible. Assimilating their teachings, we construct a foundation of skills, techniques, and vocabulary. This groundwork rewards us with creative freedom to innovate, nurturing our unique sound and artistry. Join us this month as we celebrate guitar heroes and legends that have inspired and influenced many of our own True Fire artists and educators. You just might discover a few new guitar heroes and legends to add to your own list. Let's dig in. Johnny Winter, a renowned blues rock guitarist, was celebrated for his lightning fast technique and fiery playing style. His searing guitar solos and gritty vocals were a trademark of his sound. Winter's contributions to blues and rock music, as well as his passionate stage presence, have left an indelible mark on the music world. Today's free lesson on Johnny Winter is from Mike Zito's Guitar Heroes course. Let's dig in. All right, number six on my guitar heroes. And again, I'm doing this chronologically. The one and only Johnny Winter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I had heard the name Johnny Winter when I was in high school from somebody, and I, they probably said Johnny Winters, <laughs> like something like that. Um, but I specifically remember I am out of high school. I'm working at the music store. It's like that summer out of high school. I am driving my 69 Dodge Dart four-door that I had an FM radio put in uh, through South St. Louis, uh, running an errand for the, the owner of the music store. And I got the you know stereo cranked. The speakers are distorted. One of them is blown. And I'm listening to KC95, our rock and roll radio station. And this song comes on the radio called Illustrated Man by Johnny Winter. And it goes, <laughs> just like, dude, I flipped out. I almost wrecked a car. And I am not lying. I pulled the car over and parked because I was like, oh, my God. God, like, what is this? And I listened to this just shredding, metallic, fast as lightning, blues guitar playing that was like, what's going on? Okay. Some, there's something I, that I'm hearing like, okay, I've not heard this before. What is this? What is he doing? Crazy. So I waited till the end. And they said, oh, it's the new Johnny Winter uh, illustrated man. The album's called Let Me In. And um, went back to the music store. And of course, you know, I'm like the kid that works there. Everybody else is like really old. They're like 40. But I was like 18. So I thought, of course, I thought they were old. And I said, hey, you know, like, has anybody ever heard of Johnny Winter? And they started laughing for sure. So the next day I went to a Peaches record store which was where we used to get our records. And, um, and I got the CD of Let Me In by Johnny Winter. I, I highly suggest you get the CD of Let Me In by Johnny Winter. The first song is Illustrated Man. So what I heard was just lightning fast, clean, clear playing. It was so fast and so metallic. And I didn't realize, you know, he was playing with a thumb pick and finger picks, and they were metal. So it was like, I never heard that. And he was playing. <laughs> but with this, like, metal attack, it was so uh, just ferocious sounding and uh, totally got me excited again. And interestingly enough, playing blues, like only blues, just blues licks, just really fast blues licks. They were the same as a B.B. King lick. They were the same as uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, but different than Stevie Ray Vaughan. Like, like more like 
what I realized, more like Muddy Waters or Chuck Berry. But I didn't know, I mean, I knew who Chuck Berry was. I didn't really have listened to Muddy Waters then yet. But more Delta style, more uh, deeper blues further back where, um, you know, Steve Ray Vaughan was playing like Albert King. This was more um, just Delta style blues. And anyway, man, Johnny Winter blew my mind. Also Slide. You know, I had a little bit of Slide, listened to Allman Brothers, but I heard Johnny Winter play Slide. And, and uh, oh, man, you know, that was that was it. He was just he's it. And, and, and again, Texas Blues. Um, I went and bought all his records and started listening to him night and day. And I and I still do to this day. Um, just one thing that Johnny Winter did that really was a game changer for me was being self-taught. And, you know, we all have our abilities and our disabilities and, 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 um, you know, I accepted at an early age, you know, I would watch Eddie Van Halen or Steve Vai or Ingve Malmsteen or, you know, whoever these guys were, they were playing so clean with their pick. And I, I still can't. <laughs> That's so sloppy. I, I couldn't alternate. You know, or like now, like, um, like Eric Johnson or Joe Bonamassa or Eric Gales, just this like really articulate um, picking um, with alternate picking and, and economy, all that. Man, I couldn't get my wrist. I broke this wrist when I was a kid. I, I'm positive I could never get it to, I just couldn't do it. But I started using my fingers. I started doing. I wanted to get those Johnny Winter licks down. And it, I heard him do it and I, I just could do it. And I didn't realize, but that's kind of what he's doing. He's using a thumb pick and his fingers. And I just started to use the pick down and up with the fingers, which is, you know, like, like a hybrid picking style now. It's like a, a thing that people talk about. You know, I saw Albert Lee on the instructional videos on like the old uh, hot licks back in the day. But when I heard Johnny Winter, it just kind of made sense just kind of knew what he was doing. It was one of the first times I kind of knew what somebody was doing. It made sense to me. And it really spurred me playing that way, which, by the way, if you are of interest of that style, man, you can go back through my Blues Americana course, and I do a whole part about hybrid picking and, and that, you know, kind of that technique. So that's definitely a Johnny Winter, you know, lick and... He also had like interesting things he was doing with the pentatonic that I hadn't heard, like these kind of, and he was using the finger thing, or like lightning fast. Oh my God, I can't play that fast. <laughs> so I just, Johnny Winter got me so excited about uh, blues, you know, like because I was still 18, 19, 20, young. I, wanna, I wanted to learn, but I still wanted to rock and I wanted to play fast and I wanted to, I was a kid, I still, I still want to, I just can't. <laughs> but he really brought... This fresh, it was like, it came full circle. He's like my Eddie Van Halen of the blues. I heard Johnny Winter with just this, oh, it was wonderful. And I, I'm just going to share with you just a little side note, just because I can. You know, all these years later, um, I'm such a Johnny Winter fan. And I, I end up uh, on a booking agency about 12 years ago. Uh, it was the same agency as Johnny Winter. And they started to book me on tour with Johnny. I started to be the opening act for shows for Johnny um, on tour. 
And I also had moved to Texas, uh, to Southeast Texas, to a town called Nederland, because that's where my wife is from. Well, that's, that's where Johnny Winter's from. That's where Johnny and Edgar Winter are from. They're from Southeast Texas. Nederland is right next to Beaumont. And so I got to meet Johnny, and he asked me where I lived, and I said, Nederland, Texas. And he said, wow, you're from Nederland, Texas? And I said, no, I moved there. And he said, why would anyone move to Nederland, Texas? <laughs> I said, because of a girl. Anyway, we became fast friends. And I got to play a dozen or so shows or more with Johnny. I got to play on stage with him, got to be friends with him. I got to go sit on his uh, RV tour bus with him and talk to him and hear stories about Muddy Waters and about this and that. And uh, the last time I saw him was his 70th birthday in New York City at B.B. King's. I had a guitar made for him for a birthday present that uh, uh, my dear friend Mike Delaney made. And I got to bring it to him and I played with him. I played Jump, uh, Jumpin' Jack Flash with him for the last time on his 70th birthday and gave him a guitar. And, and uh, that was the last time I saw him. So uh, Johnny Winter is just a huge, huge hero. And it was kind of a dream come true to get to know him and get to know him later in life when he was... He was uh, sober and, and doing well again and on top of the world. And um, anyway, it's it, let me I got a backing track for you that I think is kind of Johnny Winter-esque blues. It's one, four, five. It's in A. It's kind of aggressive. I'm going to get on it. You know, whenever I listen to some Johnny Winter and then I go play, ooh, immediately I'm going to get into it because he really lights my lights the fire. In my playing, he, he gets me excited. So I'll play, um, you know, these licks the way I would play them. And then we'll go back again and we'll go through it and break it down and, uh, and figure out what the heck I'm doing. 